This is going to be a lightning talk, it's going to be really fast. Uh, basically, I had a use case that I didn't find was satisfactorily taken care of within the Meteor ecosystem or the broader kind of front-end JavaScript system. So I built something and it's not like it's not on atmosphere or anything because I do think there is quite a lot of stuff that's not really fully thought through and maintained on there. So I didn't want to kind of pollute it. But if this is interesting to anybody, I'll, you know, then feel free to talk to me about it and you know we can do something, I'm sure. Basically, so uh, this, fortunately, the presentation is what the thing is. There we are, I've just swiped a page. I think there's something very nice and increasingly intuitive about swiping between full pages, um, particularly on mobile. Oh, and actually, you can, you can look at this if the text is small or the contrast is poor. It's swiper demo, swiper-demo.meteor.com. So you can actually just look at the same thing. Um, swiping between full pages is very intuitive and um, it's a good way of displaying information and having like in interactivity with the app. The, the packages that uh, were available to me, um, so in like broader JavaScript world, there's stuff like fullpage.js, uh, which is kind of all right. Even then, it's not brilliant. And I find getting anything like that, which is kind of quite opinionated to play nicely with Blaze, is like a headache. Um, and in the Meteor world, there's some really good trans like page transition stuff. Um, there's something called Meteor Transitioner that was posted on Crater a few days ago and there's momentum as well. But there for actually doing the transitions, it's not really for the interaction. I, I kind of wanted both. So I just wanted to build like a big grid and have a viewport that you swiped around, pretty much. So it, it kind of does that, uh, hopefully effectively, primarily horizontally, then um, vertically if you want. That kind of like seemed the, the right way to do things. It's fairly easy to customize. So there's a layout template that this is running on. You probably can't read it because it's too small, but it's telling you the location and the grid in the bottom corner. Um, you can customize it with uh, CSS classes, so that's why the, the color looks different. And you can change the arrow colors to something that's actually, I'll be honest, quite um, gaudy, but there we are. Um, callbacks when you arrive at new pages, there we are. So it's saying, welcome to the page. Um, uh, that's all kind of fairly straightforward. The, the more meteoric stuff, and really this is the use case that I built it for, is you, so, so I can't now swipe right. It's not going to let me swipe any further. Um, these, these people don't exist, they're made with like fake JS, so this is just like fake data. So you, you, you come to a page, you want this swipe interaction, you want people to swipe around, but at some point you want to stop them and say, okay, now you need to choose an action, and I will show you the data using kind of the same um, uh, Chrome, the same experience, but you, you need to make a choice. So you can see the basic info, let's have a look at Darian Faye's basic info. There it is, he works for Muller LLC in Hammerside. None of these things exi exist, I assume. You can swipe back again, and actually swiping back is, is the, the, the main thing that maybe want to make this, because if, you, like, if you're continually changing routes and stuff, then maintaining state actually becomes a headache, maintaining the state of the page you were at previously to present to the user that the page is still there, even though it's actually not, is actually a huge headache. Um, so it's just better if it's already there and you just literally swipe back to it, you're literally moving the viewport. So that's why I made this. So, and then we can have a look at Casey Pollich. And, and what this is doing is just rendering the template in the appropriate place when you choose it. And there's Braden Lake and um, all info. So, so the, in this like, little demo app, the basic info for all these three people is 137. Thank you. Um, the basic info for all these people is already present on the client. Um, if you want to subscribe to something else, it's clever enough to wait for the information. So it's waiting, and then it will show you the information once the, like, it's basically wait on exactly the same as Iron Router, and you can wait on loads of stuff. So again, it's going to wait until it's, it's got the information before it renders anything. Um, it's very easy to enable and disable swiping. So at the moment, I can, like, so there, I can't swipe in any direction. It's not going to let me go anywhere. But if I turn stuff back on, I can now swipe left again. There we are. And there's, like, a nice API to do that stuff. So the questions, is it potentially useful? What else should it be doing? 25 seconds. So yeah, is there something that I haven't shown you there that you think, oh, I'd use that if it did this. Please let me know. Specifically, I love isomorphic stuff. The server didn't do anything here. It's purely client side. The best thing about Meteor packages is their full stack. So is there anything the server could be doing? And if you want to look at it, the, this top thing is the, the package. So you can just like pull it into a packages folder and it'll work. And then Meteor add it. Um, this is the demo that you can see, which is at the page swiperdemo.meteor.com. And that's it. I'm going to leave. Thank you.